contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. The coloring's different. I'm about to fix the coloring. What's going on, Freakazoids? Special alert tonight. Special special alert. There are hundreds of super spreader events going around the country right now as fans of Joe Biden do not social distance and are in huge packs of tens of thousands of people. Oh my God, everybody. How dare you? In fact, what they need to do is have Joe get up and give a national speech to have them all go home or at least stand six feet apart for God's sake. Okay? Yeah. How's it going? <laughs> it's, you guys are so quiet. Absolutely huge super spreader events going around the country. Well, Gray, that's just because they're really excited. Right, you mean like when Trump's fans went to the rallies, right? Well, that's different because, well, it's not really different at all. But we, what we won't do is we won't mention it this time. Right? Does anybody get sick of the hypocrisy that's out there? Because I sure as hell do. And oh, another thing is Schumer, Chuck Schumer, the just pile of crap, he goes right in the middle of the huge crowd in New York, takes down his math and start, mask and starts talking. <laughs> what are you doing, Schumer? You just spent all this time bitching and moaning about not wearing masks and not social distancing, and then... You completely forgot it, because now it's cool. It's cool, man. It's for a good reason. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know about you, but... Look at um, I know everybody wants it to be like, Hey, you know what? It's time to move on. And I'll, I'm, I'm not going to do it, okay? Uh, the Democratic Party, in my opinion, does not deserve to have a sort of just, Oh, everybody's just wonderful moment, uh, uh starting the new administration if it actually does happen okay it seems like it's gonna but um they don't deserve the peace okay because they gave none to trump for five years okay and it's not there's no moral sort of like justification for what what they did to him none at all and um i i for one i'm, I'm not going to just sort of roll over and go yeah you know what it's time to, you know, the worst part about the speech tonight was when he said something like, it's time to heal. We all need to come together. Really? Where the hell was that four years ago? Okay. Unbelievable. Just hypocritical, nonsensical bullshit. And I hope you guys see the same thing because it's absolutely not, uh, it's not good. So, all right, there you go, everybody. That's my initial rant for the uh, the show. Hope you don't mind. And even if you did mind, I wouldn't give a shit, okay? All right. Uh, <laughs> it's just, I don't even care what side you're a fan of. Just notice those things. It's horrible. <laughs> that yeah, makes me, it actually makes me ill.
You know, and, and I get these emails from trolls saying, hey, your guy lost, man, you sucker. You're, you were spreading propaganda. Hey, listen, I, w I never spread anything on this channel or say anything that isn't absolutely uh, true, okay? Like, for example, tr uh, Donald Trump is not a racist, okay? But people feel like they need to send me an email. So just know this, as soon as you send me an email like that, you'll be put onto the filter where you're immediately deleted and blocked and I'll never see an email from you again. All right, now you can go waste your time and create another email that I'll just add to the same list. It's no big deal. I won't be reading your comments though. Now it's not an opinion, it's literally fact, Alexander, that he's not a racist, okay? And I'm sorry that maybe somebody like you voted for uh, Biden because you thought Trump was a racist, but he 100% is not one. It's not an opinion, that's fact. Now, you could make a really good argument that Biden's a racist. He's made many, many comments that are absolutely racist. Okay? And nobody, everyone, when he makes the comments, he goes, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, I live in Canada? <whistles> Yikes. No wonder. Yeah, the same, the same uh, country that lets a guy that chopped a guy's head off on a bus out after five years. Good stuff over there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. His actions were absolutely showed that he wasn't a racist at all. He had many meetings with uh, minorities all around the White House all the time, big panels coming in there. But guess what, everybody? CNN and MSNBC never played it at all. You never saw those meetings. I did, though. He extended for 12 years the college funding for uh, black colleges so they didn't have to keep coming back asking for money every year. I guess you missed that part, too. And he, you know, just, so, there's so many things. It's, uh, he had true uh, criminal justice reform. Hey, look at that. It's Claudia Dubauer. Thank you. Okay, well now we're going to get on back on to, there's so many cases in New Jersey, it's crazy, all right? And some of them we'll have to look up on a map, I just didn't have time. I was collecting all the article information. I'm not even quite sure I'll be able to get through all of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, that kind of stuff, does, you know, but nobody cares. You know, that, that's, that's the sad part. Uh, Jackie, there, there was a narrative that needed to be spun, and they were going to spin it. And it happened for four years. And I, I don't know, I mean, what's amazing is Trump got 8 million more votes this time around than, than last time. But Biden actually got uh, 10 more million than Hillary Clinton. You know, got. You know, we'll see what, what goes on. Yeah, New Jersey's like, uh, and they're all during this sort of 1965 to 1980. Tons and tons of murders. I think tonight there might be a couple that are related. Um, and actually from one the other night that we discussed, it seemed like, remember the one that worked at the hospital? Well, there's this other person that worked right on the same block, and she ends up being murdered too. And it was two years after the 19, that 1965 murder. Hey, Half Rudder, thank you. Yeah. I always love it when people from Canada try to come over and tell us what we should be doing. As if their president is so great, Trudeau, man. Boy, that guy's an absolute... He's awesome, man. Whew. Look it. I, I bet you he looks pretty good to the ladies, right? But he's ridiculous. Hey, there's Cairo. He's out on the road, not feeling too well. Everybody get some good thoughts out for him. You know? <laughs> I called him up on the phone today, and I didn't, even know the, I didn't even know who the hell I was talking to for a few minutes there. And Vic... 
Victoria Ballard. Thank you. Hey, did you get my email? I, I don't know if there was anything really going on there. I think it's just um, your bank or something, because nobody else has that same problem, and it would be sort of a bigger problem if it, uh, unless, I think it was just sort of whatever your bank's, they might consider YouTube, Facebook, and things like that. I gave you the number to call that lady, though. You, could, you guys could have worked it out. Thanks, Cairo. Now you're all good now? Okay. Well, I don't think you're all good. But <laughs> you know. Uh, do you feel better now than you did earlier today? I was like, man, we haven't heard from Cairo for a long time. So I called him up. And uh, there, there was a reason. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I didn't think you were feeling much better. but Yeah, so just go get all that shit checked out. Okay, cool. So it, everything seemed pretty normal then, right, Victoria? Yeah. I'm going to, in the next couple of days, I'm going to try to use the other streaming software again. Just to, I'm sort of missing uh, some of the other stuff that I have. But I'll, I'm going to definitely al alternate back and forth. Yeah, yeah, he he doesn't he doesn't believe he has the Rona. <laughs> He's pretty careful, man. He's like uh he wears double N95 masks and and then on top of that, he wears one of those um almost looks like a space suit when he walks around. It's really weird when he came over the other, the other time. You ever you ever seen the movie The Boy in the Plastic Bubble with uh, John Travolta? That's sort of what his car is like, you know. It's just wrapped in plastic, but it drives up and down the streets. And then he has these little gloves through the windows that you stick your hand in, and then you sort of can grab your, you know, your meal or whatever. And then you have to figure out this way. I don't really know how that actually works, but. Yeah, Dana Dane and Jim Swain, they got their uh, mugs today, finally. Or not even finally. It wasn't even that long ago. Was, I sent. I did rush orders on everybody who ordered one. I think I might have forgot on one of them. That's right, McNeil. No, oh, you got yours too already. Cool, Dadio. So you got to send in your your picture, Dadio. Okay, we see. We saw your Halloween one. I didn't. Th I don't. Th I didn't forget anybody. What do you mean? I forgot something. I sent mugs to every single person that that had it. What do you mean? I forgot yours. You forgot mine. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I've sent them. I've sent everybody the mugs. <laughs> oh, you want another one, Tracy? Oh, I see what you're trying to pull here. I didn't get mine, but you mind if I change it now? I want the one that says. Okay. I get it. Nice try, Tracy. Nice try. I know I did the rush order where it takes only four, uh, four or five days or something. Here, hold on a second. I gotta get my I gotta get my Gatorade. Yes, red alert everybody. Look out for the super spreader events all around the country at this point. How irresponsible of all of them. Well, Gray, we had a good reason. We were just really excited. Oh, you mean like when Trump was doing his rallies? Well, no, 
looks like it well, is exactly, exactly like, like that, that, but uh, we're not going to have the media bitching at us all the time. Oh, that's true, that's true. Yeah, nice try though, Tracy. Nice try. Okay, here we go. Let's get going on the uh, cases here. If it gets going too long, I might just cut off three of them and then I'll change the thumbnail and the information and do the other three later. She was a marker. Yeah, Kubi's had Kubi had a pretty good uh, outfit too. I mean, for a last minute thing, it was pretty good. It was generic gray hues. You know, she had the generic cap on, uh, generic everything. <laughs> I think she was creating a, a, a the actual set in the background. Now that I think back to it. And then Sarah Beth had a good one. Although nobody knows what Sarah Beth looked like whatsoever because she had my face on her face. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's right. Ky Kairos wasn't too bad, but man, it got kind of graphic there for a little bit. Yeah, especially when he came back on that second time. That's right, and Dana Dane was the hitchhiker, which means absolutely no outfit whatsoever. She just needed to put a little bit of a uh, mark around her neck or something. Just sort of, you know, like she got strangled after she was hitchhiking. Didn't we have, wasn't Stephanie also a, uh, a hitchhiker? Yeah, that was pretty fun. But my outfit, I won actually, right? Come on. I should have done the one where I just had my face because my head, my face would just be floating around in the scene. Yeah, that's right. Steph May with the scarf, right? But I guess what it could be is anybody who showed up without a costume is a, you know, could be a hitchhiking victim, right? I don't even remember. Mine was just my eyeballs, right? What was mine? <laughs> I don't remember what I put on. What was it? I know I had all green, so you couldn't see my arms or anything. And then it was uh, my head. Oh, that's right. That's right. Then there was a jail suit and a hat, right? Okay. Man, isn't that crazy? Couldn't even remember. Getting old. Yeah, that, but at the end, when it's just my face right here, that's the one that looks uh, cool because it's just your head floating around with nothing. Like you could literally, well, you couldn't see my chair behind me. I could fake something like that if I made sure that my chair never moved and put an image of my chair without me in it behind. Like if I get out of here, take a picture, use that as the background, then my head could be floating around and it would be floating around in front of my chair. Without it, you'd just see my head floating around on the bricks. I, I, no, that's, well, no, that's true because I, I fixed it where I put a green shirt over the top of my chair so my chair was invisible also. So that would have worked, yeah. Okay, so here we go. Moving along here. Did I ever do one with this girl right here? Because it didn't seem like it. I couldn't find her in all of my files. Do you guys remember her at all? There's ones that, the other dark haired girls and whatnot, but I don't think that was. Okay, good. All right, so her name is Mary Ann Della Sala, 1967. And January 24th. So I think she was just missing for a while. Local, state, and federal authorities are continuing a 13 state search for Marianne De La Sala, 17 of 150 Hobart Street, who has been missing since last Tuesday when she left work to walk home. 
All right, so we got the, let me, uh, Okay, Jersey 4, 14, there we go. So this is where she lived. I don't know what, if that was there before, but that's her address. Let me turn down this music a little bit. Yeah, so this is probably, you know, this is now but this is 1960 something there's probably a house there and you can tell i mean look at there's houses 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 and then eventually the zoning probably got changed there's even looks like houses right there i bet you if we went back even to let's see what happens in 1995 it looks like the building's still there but that's 30 years still ahead that's how old these are hey thanks jackie blue all right Uh, let's see, Marianne, a senior at the high school at a, and a part-time employee of the ShopRite supermarket on Essex Street, left the store at 9 p.m. last week with several fellow employees. She was last seen walking east on Essex, Essex Street after telling her companion she would walk home, and it was less than a mile away. And this is where she worked, right here. And there used to be a, what do you, I don't know if it's what became Rite Aid, but uh, Shop Right. I kind of feel like that turned into Rite Aid later because it has R-I-T-E in it. But uh, Shop Right, she worked right here where this pin is. And here's what was interesting when I was looking at that, where she worked. This is where the uh, that nursing school was, where... Alice Jean Eberhardt lived. And remember, that was the one with the crazy dagger, right? And I think she was found, she was found in a river, that's right. But she was absolutely, you know, stabbed to death with this crazy looking dagger. And so it's interesting to me that you're literally in the same block. It almost makes you wonder if it was somebody that, I don't know, maybe they were interested and they thought maybe their nurse was going to be walking around or young women and then you spotted her. Because, I mean, it's just, that just seems way too coincidental to me. At, within two years, a girl that lived here, went to school here and lived here at the nursing school, and then another person who worked here, they both get murdered and their bodies are found elsewhere. And And here's another thing is her body... Alice Jean Eberhart and this victim, uh, Della Sella, I think she was found in a river too. So what do you think of that? I find that interesting. All right. Uh, she was wearing a brown, she was walking home less than a mile away, and like I was just showing you, it's really, let's see where Essex Street is. I was going to guess maybe one of these, or maybe it's this one. Longview, that, okay, that's Essex. So it's just outside of work, but she lives right, oh, I guess just right there. Yeah, Marianne, so that makes sense. She'd be walking down Essex Street this way, all the way to here probably, right around in this area, and then and then eventually cut across on one of these side streets, probably maybe even like right here, and then cut across, go up, and that's where she lived. So it wasn't far away at all from there. Hey, thanks, Jody Williams. Her father, Joseph De La Sala, co-owner of the Bergen Paper Supply Corporation at 115 West Green Street, has publicly appealed for anyone with information 
about the whereabouts of his daughter to contact local police. The girl is one of seven children in the family. Okay. Hey, it's Billy Boy Blue. He needed the money. <laughs> there he is. Had to pop in really quick to say hi because Gray needed the money. Oh, that's true. That's true. And the charities. Don't worry about that. Police hunt teen girl. Uh, let's see. A pretty high school honor student beauty contest winner missing from home for eight days was the object of a hunt by police Tuesday. Mary Ann De Sala, De La Sala, 17, was last seen leaving her part-time job at a supermarket on Essex Street about 9 a.m. on January 25th. A state alarm was issued by police eight days ago. Miss De La Sala, an honor student at Hackensack High School and a part-time modeling student in Manhattan, was reported missing by her parents the next morning. Police said she was 5 foot 4 inches tall, 120 pounds, with brown hair and eyes. They added that she was wearing tan slacks, a suede jacket, light blue sweater, blue shoes, a blue polka dot headband, and was carrying a brown shoulder strap style pocketbook when last seen. That was on February 1st. And then March 11th, Girl Found in River, newspaper and New York television stations. Don't you guys find it interesting, though, that both those cases that were uh, that were so close to each other were both found in rivers? <laughs> and then Kit Kat fired back with, Broke Billy Boy Blue? He always needs some money. <laughs> Uh, newspaper and New York television stations. The Della Salas have six other children. Hackensack Police. I guess that was continued from page one. So let me get to the... I think this might be it. Hmm. I guess I missed that part. But anyway, this is cause of girl's death. The exact cause of death of a 17-year-old Hackensack high school girl will not be known until an autopsy is completed either today or in a couple of days, according to Hawthorne Police. The body of Mary Ann Del Sala of 150 Hobart Street, Hawthorne, was found floating down the Passaic River shortly after noon yesterday. Jeez. The police said the girl had been missing since January 25th. So, man, she two and a half months it took. Well, thanks, Michelle Nicholas. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We got the cool freak family. The body police said had been positively identified by the family dentist, Dr. Benjamin, I uh, can't make that out, Altent, and the girl's brother, Anthony. Police added that internal organs had been sent to Trenton to be analyzed and examined to determine the cause of death. River victim often near Passaic Falls. Passaic County detectives, this is now about three days after, four days after she was found. Detectives are continuing their investigation into the death of Mary Ann uh, De La Sala, 17 of 150 Hobart Street. The investigation, which is waiting for a report from the Edo Laboratories Network, is being spearheaded by the prosecutor's office and Hackensack Police. The girl's body was found. In the Passaic River in Hawthorne Monday, she had been missing since January 24th. It is theorized the girl left the Hackensack Bus Depot about 9 p.m. on January 24th and came to Patterson. So where, what's Patterson? Hold on. Is that a street or what is that? No. Now oh, there it is, Patterson. What the hell is she doing way over there? Hmm. Well, what, who's this body, though? Hold on a second. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy, isn't it? How there's just bodies all over the place, but they're right, everything's next to each other. 
Look at that. See, that is the body of Alice Jean Everhart. And, I mean, that's just, I don't know. That's too crazy. So here's Patterson. Let me see what it said there. The girl's body was found. It is theorized the girl left the Hackensack bus depot about 9 p.m. on January 24th and came to Patterson. She was known to have frequented a restaurant near the Passaic River Falls. Okay, let's see where that is. Passaic River Falls. Okay. So this is near Patterson. A restaurant near here. Let's just say... So that's interesting. They said she was walking down. Maybe she was walking the other way and she wasn't heading home. And see, now look how weird this is again, because I think her body ends up being found in this river. And then that other victim was found in the river here. And they were both working or living right in that same block. Every time I look up, Zoe's always laughing at something. And I always wonder, what does that have to do with what I'm saying? Yeah, same river. Uh, it is believed the girl either fell, jumped, or pushed into the water below the falls. Although authorities said most people who knew her, knew her claimed the girl was not uh, despondent. One friend is alleged to have reported she was, she was because her boyfriend was being sent overseas with the Army. The boyfriend identified as Tony Orsi was in Virginia Army camp at the time of her disappearance. I don't think she would have done that, you know. I don't think she would have killed herself. Let me go back to what this one. Does it say? Well, I'll move forward. And then in July 1971, four years after that, Marianne Del Solo at 17. So this has a, another breakdown, another article in the paper. Uh, let's see, Marianne Del Sol at 17 was a senior at Hackensack High School. She was a vivacious, pretty, serious girl, thanks Christy B, who worked part-time after school to help the family finances. At 9 p.m. January 24, 1967, Mary Ann, her red, reddish-brown hair peeping out from beneath her hat, left the store where she worked and headed home. See, now it's saying she headed home in this one. Marianne was wearing a heavy sweater and tight-fitting slacks when she was last seen alive. So maybe they said she headed to that town because that's where her body was found, and that's why they came up with a theory. But if you think of a serial killer motive, she was just walking home, abducted, and then dumped in the very same river that other victims were dumped in, right? Doesn't that make more sense? Okay, so let's see. April 10th, 1967, a factory worker was taking a lunchtime stroll along the banks of the Passaic River in Hawthorne behind the municipal sewage treatment plant. Let's see if it's still there. Municipal sewage treatment plant. And that's in... Um, in uh, Hawthorne. Okay, that's where they have it there. Okay, look how close that is to where the other girl was found. Yeah, so I don't know exactly where the sewage treatment is. Let's see. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. boom. Is that crazy? I wonder if I this is where she was found. I think this is, you know what I think? I think that I have this in the wrong folder because I was looking at the similarities. 
Okay, that makes sense. So let me uh, get this out of that folder. That was in the wrong folder. It should be in this one. Okay, there we go. So this is where De La Sala was found. And in one of the articles I read, it was at the end of this street. And now it turns out that that's the sewage treatment plant. Anyways, so we're right in this, this area. So this is where her body was found. De La Sala, not the other girl that I mentioned. Uh, Marianne had been, uh, let's see. Wow, so now they know. April 10th, 1967, a factory worker was taking a lunchtime stroll along the banks of the Passaic River behind the municipal sewage treatment plant. He spotted something floating in the river. It was the body of Mary Ann De La Sala. So let's see if there's a street view there right in that area. Now look at that right there. So this is where the guy was probably taking a break. You know, this is the sewage treatment plant. Walking around and looked in the river and there she was. Marianne had been strangled, so now we know how she died. So now we know she didn't just jump in the water. She'd been strangled. Lieutenant Victor de Simone of the Passaic County Prosecutor's Staff deduced that she had been killed elsewhere, then thrown into the river. Marianne still had her pocketbook with her when she was found, attached to her sweater. She had not been robbed. There was something ritualistically sexual about the appearance of the body Witnesses said, although Mary Ann hadn't been sexually molested. Really? Yeah, how do you know that? Come on. Jeez, you're, you're, she was in the water for two and a half months, strangled. What other reason would there be? I mean, I guess if she had her, all of her clothes on and everything like that, uh, you know, you could make an argument. But All right, so now we go to the 2000. And this is an article about her again. And this guy, uh, this guy, Alvis right here, he appears in about a ton of the New Jersey missing persons or murdered victims as a possible suspect. The 33-year-old unsolved murder case of Mary Ann De La Sala, whose body was found floating in the Passaic River near the Great Falls in Patterson in 1967, has been reactivated a prosecutor said, in light of the publicity surrounding the nationwide manhunt for Raymond Alves. It doesn't hurt to put new eyes on the case, said Marilyn Zabinski, Deputy First Assistant Prosecutor. De La Sala, who was 17 when she disappeared from her Hackensack neighborhood on January 24, 1967, was one of eight teenage girls from the area whose slayings in the 1960s and 70s were never solved. Prosecutors in both Bergen and Passaic County say they are revisiting some of those cases now, and convicted rapist Raymond Alvis, 57, was mistakenly oh, geez, released from Southern State Prison in Cumberland County. Zobinski said that since the De La Sala case is still under investigation, Prosecutors cannot comment, and all I can say is that the new information surrounding the cases will obviously spur another review of the file. <coughs> I'm gonna get a drink. The release was a mistake on the part of the prison officials because they failed to notify appropriate authorities, including Bergen and Passaic County prosecutors. A federal arrest complaint was signed on Wednesday charging Alves with interstate flight to avoid prosecution. The basis for the complaint is failing to register as a sex offender under Megan's law. Alves also allegedly gave authorities a false address in Massachusetts. 
Elvis is wanted by the FBI and will be featured in a 30-second segment on tonight's episode of America's Most Wanted, which airs at 9 p.m. Let's see. Old schoolmates and family members of De La Sala say the focus on her death so long ago brings back painful memories. My immediate reaction when I saw her picture on TV last night was rage, said Susan Young, who went to Hackensack High School with Del Sala and now works there as a guidance counselor. It all came back. If he did this and they catch him, I hope they can prosecute him. No family should have to live with this kind of memory. So anyways, it seems like that guy might be related, but you know, nobody's ever been charged. It's still a cold case. And the actual sort of the write-up in that same website says, on, January, on Tuesday, January 24, 1967, <clears throat> at approximately 9 p.m., Marianne De La Salle, age 17, um, finished her shift at ShopRite, located at 330 Essex Street in Hackensack. Marianne was reported, reportedly offered a ride by a female co-worker, but declined because it was a nice night. Marianne chose to walk home the co-worker did drive another employee home to Wood Ridge. On her way back, she did not see Marianne along her normal route, so she probably expected to see her walking down Essex Street. Uh, Marianne De La Sala was last seen wearing a light blue sweater and suede jacket with tan pants, blue shoes, and a blue headband. She was carrying a shoulder strap handbag. She was also wearing the boyfriend's Hackensack High School class ring, which was engraved with his initials. Victim was found in Passaic River near Ryerson Way, and that's that street that we looked at the crime scene from. And, um, and she was found on the 10th of April, 1967. And now it says no cause of death was determined. They must not have kept re reading. So these, these were created by somebody reading articles and they think she was strangled so they missed that part okay so now we're moving on to the next one all right i'm just reading the comment now, yeah, it's, it's weird how people get released sometimes accidentally. I don't know how that happens either. All right, the next one is, there's two women here. They're girls. Well, they're 19, so whatever you want to, teenage women. Susan Davis, 19, and Elizabeth Perry, 19. All right. So Forrest uh, bears two girls. So two teenage girls believed to be the missing daughters of prominent businessmen from Pennsylvania and Minnesota were found slain and covered with leaves yesterday in a wooded area in Egg Harbor Township, five miles from the city, the resort city. So let's see where that is. Egg Harbor. So Egg Harbor Township. So just somewhere around in here at this point. Five miles from the resort city. The bodies, uh, one nude and the other clad in torn and frayed clothes, were covered with, um, it's like, welts and bruises, authorities said. Police said there was some evidence of sexual assault. Police summoned the parents of the missing girls to see if they could identify the bodies which were taken to Shore Memorial Hospital 
in Summers Point. Leaves had been kicked over the two bodies. Huh, that's sort of interesting. You, you hear that in some of these cases. Susan Davis of Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, and Elizabeth Perry of Excelsior, Minnesota, both 19 and recent graduates of Monticello Junior College in Godfrey, Illinois, were last reported seen alive when they checked out of a rooming house here at 4.30 a.m. Friday. So they were staying in a, in a probably a dorm, maybe. Monticello Junior College in Godfrey, Illinois, were last reported seen alive when they checked out of a rooming house here. I guess it doesn't really... This is in New Jersey. Their car was found abandoned late Friday along the heavily traveled Garden State Parkway on the route to Pennsylvania and was towed by the state police to a storage area. So let's see. Now let me, find, let me see if I can find a better more of a descriptive article looks like right here is where when they found the bodies looks like one of them's on right on this gurney right here New Jersey State Police removed the body of one of the two girls found slain in Egg Harbor Township the girl Susan Davis of Camp Hill Pennsylvania and Elizabeth Perry of Excelsior Minnesota had been missing since Friday hmm so I wonder why they did they just graduate or what's going on there? Yeah, both nineteen recent graduates of Monticello Junior College in Godfrey, Illinois, were last reported seen alive when they checked out of a rooming house. So maybe that's more like one of those like a a place where you're sort of traveling around, you stay in what do you call those things? Like a hostel? almost a youth hostel yes everybody and don't forget we are still raising money for the end of the month and my channel as well but we've donated eight, eighteen thousand dollars this year you guys have probably all heard a thousand times where we're donating what's the best town name ever it, um Okay, let me move on to this next article. So this is a really long one here, but I think this one might actually have information that we can... Hey, thanks, LM and Julie W. Two co-eds found stabbed to death at shore. So this is a long one, so I'm just going to go through it, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, and that says continued from page, and I think because I have a link here, I can go to page one, and we're on a page 11 right now, so just remember it's on page 11. Here they are right here, the two friends. You know what's weird about these black and white uh, in the newspaper? I always feel like, you know, you could almost frame some of these pictures, right? Just the way that I love the contrast and uh, I mean that's how charcoal people that draw with charcoal they kind of draw the negative space and then put the dark in you know they put the dark in there and it creates the light space yeah so it's pretty cool yeah well he here's the thing everybody I've paid in ta uh, on this channel so far I've paid in taxes it, um, almost the exact same amount that I've donated to charity, okay? Because <laughs> I have to pay myself, so I'm estimating. So there you go. That just shows you how little uh, the creator ends up with after you do that. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, I don't know. I just like these kind of pictures. I mean, it sucks that they're dead, but like you could actually frame something like that and then change it up a little bit so I've paid um, let's see actually let me think three quarters 
Yeah, it's a little bit more than we've donated. About 19, maybe 19,000. Okay. Two missing co-eds are found stabbed to death at shore. And it looks like the story is actually over here on the right. So let me... Summer's Point, two teenage girls were badly, whose badly decomposed bodies were found in the woods near this shore resort yesterday afternoon were stabbed to death, possibly by a kitchen paring knife autopsy uh, revealed this morning. It's, see, isn't it interesting? I mean, it's weird that two people were able to be, and they're adults, were overcome by maybe one person. Maybe there's more than one, though. An autopsy found Susan, 19, the daughter of a wealthy businessman from Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, died from a stab wound in the right side of the neck that penetrated her larynx. Her, larynx. Um, her killer inflicted several other stab wounds to her neck and left abdomen, according to Edward Albano, chief medical examiner for New Jersey, who completed the autopsies this morning. Multiple bruises about the upper part of the of her body in, indicated she may have been beaten, police said. Elizabeth Perry, also 19, the daughter of a paper manufacturer from Excelsior, Minnesota, died from stab wounds to her right chest, which cut into a lung an autopsy found. Miss Perry also suffered several other stab wounds about her left chest and right neck, according to Albano. She too was found to have sustained multiple bruises about the upper part of her body, possibly from a severe beating. Albano found the stab wounds were made by a sharp instrument, probably a small type knife, possibly a paring knife. The state police laboratory at Trenton was conducting further tests to determine if either where both the girls were raped. The bodies were found in a dense woods about 100 yards off Garden State Parkway here about 2 p.m. yesterday. Their car was found at the side of the roadway near the murder scene Friday morning. Miss Davis' body, completely nude, was found lying face down in six inches deep underbrush and leaves. Her body uh, her clothes were neatly piled near the body, police said. Huh. See, that's another one of those cases. Remember that when the bo the clothing was folded up neatly? I wonder if it was just something like, hey, you know, take off your clothes. And then she, night, you know, didn't just throw her clothes down. She folded them up. I don't know how that would actually work. It just... Uh, let's see. The clothes was lying about 20 feet away. The girl missing since they left an Ocean City rooming house. 4.30 a.m. Friday were identified by their fathers in the morgue of the Shore Memorial Hospital here last night. Scores of state and local police... Working under state police, Lieutenant James Brennan, are investigating the murders and possible rape. At least 20 persons have been questioned in connection with the double murder, but police say they have no suspects. The girl's car, which provided no obvious clues, was sent to the state police lab in Trenton today for thorough checking. A 1966 Chevrolet Impala convertible the car had been in police custody since Friday morning, but due to a series of errors and delays, which police officials have refused to discuss, the car was handled like any other abandoned vehicle until yesterday morning. Jeez, good stuff. More than five hours of combing the woods with minesweepers yesterday failed to uncover any clues to the identity of the killer or killers. The bodies were found face down in six inch deep underbrush, an estimated 100 yards off the Garden State Parkway, two miles north. So let's see if I can find this now. Uh, 
Um, let's see. Estimate 100 yards off Garden State Parkway. Let's just see where that is. Okay, so that's the Garden State Parkway. Garden State Parkway, two miles north of the Summers Point Ocean City entrance ramp. So where is that? Summers Point Ocean Now so way down here, okay. And there's that Egg Harbor. And they said it was near Hmm. It's hard to Let's see, Summers Point Ocean City entrance ramp. So where's Ocean City? I guess we could, okay, this is Summers Point. And then where's Ocean City? Yeah. Yeah, okay, well there we go. So since that's over here, Kind of makes you wonder if it's just like right here. Discovery by a parkway maintenance man. Uh, let's see. State Parkway, two miles north of the Summers Point Ocean City entrance ramp. So maybe there's like a ramp, a ramp that goes into the water. If that was there. Because, I mean, I think they're talking about entrance ramp, like how, how you get into the wall, right there, maybe? I don't know. Maybe that's a highway. I bet you that's... I bet you anything that is now continued on. Let's see. Yeah? sure what that is. But they say two miles north. And then all of a sudden, you're getting closer to the that location, Egg Harbor, that they mentioned. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be able to... How, how do you know, Berserker Loki? Do you live there? Because it says Summers Point Ocean City entrance ramp at about 2 p.m. The discovery by a parkway maintenance man came during the first hour of an intensive search of the woods. Here, let me check something out real fast. Because I, I did have this map. So let me, uh, let me just get a, zoom out a little bit. Okay, so it's way down there. All right, so this is going to be her. Nope. Yeah, there's more than one right in that area. Just trying to uh, find this one. I think it might be uh, right here. Okay, right there. Hmm, that's a different person. No. <laughs> yeah, it's so wild. 
There's so many victims. I'm looking at this other map to try to figure out where they're going to say. Okay, well, anyways, I, I don't want to keep looking for that. It's, it, it's like, yeah, I, I would have to go to the ground and type it in, but it looked like... Uh, Yeah, so it's in this general area right here. Yeah, right there. So let me see. Okay, this might be it though. So we're talking about the two girls. Wow, there's another girl that was actually found right down here. How crazy is that? Okay, now I got it. Yeah, so I'm right in the right spot right here. Literally. Very close. And that's exactly where they have it. Right where I have that pin is what they're saying. Right, right before that bridge. Right there. And then... And what is that? That location. I think this other location is where they... We're staying. Garden State Parkway. Garden State Parkway. There it is. And then there's like a lake. <laughs> anyways, it, this is close. So anyways, apparently it's somewhere around in this area, two miles north of there. Uh, but it's crazy because there's other people that were found in the general area, more women there. So, okay. Thanks, lady. Saw the girls in a car. Alright, so the search in the woods, shore vacation. Police this morning learned from the unidentified waitress at a restaurant on the Ocean City Summers Point border that the girls had their last meal there sometime between 4.45 and 5.30 on Friday. Police declined to say whether or not the girls were alone at the time, but they noted the autopsy revealed the girls died 20 to 30 minutes after eating. So it wasn't, that means the food wasn't digested. At 4.30 a.m. Friday, the girls checked out of a rooming house a block from Ocean City's boardwalk. The girls said to, said to be in very high spirits were leaving after three-day vacation at the shore. They were to return to Susan's house and join her family for... Friday night trip to Durham, North Carolina, where they were to watch Susan's 21-year-old brother, Wesley Jr., receive his degree from Duke University at ceremonies yesterday. Susan was excited about going to the graduation ceremonies and talked much about it while at the shore, according to Walter Sybin, owner of the rooming house where they stayed. She herself had just graduated after two years at the Monticello Junior College, an expensive women's school in Alton. Uh, for Elizabeth, described by Sybin as more talkative, but just as sophisticated as Susan, it was her first trip to a seashore. She had heard about the shore in Ocean City from Susan, who was her big sister in a way, in her sorority. So she was her big sister in the sorority at Monticello Junior College last year. Elizabeth, who would have been a sophomore at the school, talked much about the lifeguard job she had lined up for the summer job in Minnesota. The girls did not sleep Thursday night. They were out on the beach and boardwalk until 2 a.m., Simon said. Then they returned to tell him they would be leaving at 4.30 a.m. So that's kind of weird, right? I mean, the girls went out again and returned shortly after 4 a.m. by themselves. Sybin said they rushed to pack to meet their 4.30 a.m. deadline of whatever the hell that was. He said he did not know why they insisted on such a deadline. 
Before leaving, the girls kissed Simon and embraced his wife. They said if they ever returned to Ocean City, they wanted to stay at the house, a three-story shingled structure, which is the second house in from the Ninth Street, uh, Ninth Street Beach. Let's see. It looks like it's all caps. So. That. I don't know if that's it. Looks like it actually had a, it was a name. It was Ninth Street Beach. Is that an actual beach with that name, that full name? Hmm. I don't think that's where they were staying though. See, it was up in, in that other town. Although, I mean, it's close to where she was found, though, so maybe. Or both of them. But it had it in all caps, so I was hoping that would have been. Second house in from the 9th Street Beach. So maybe that's 9th as in 9th Street Beach, but it looks like it should be. Like, beach is capitalized. It's not like it's just some generic beach on 9th Street. Elizabeth said she would like to write Mrs. Sybin, who had helped care for her Wednesday afternoon when she stayed in, the, in her bed. Uh, Miss Sybin, too, too upset to talk to reporters yesterday, had walked the girls to the porch Friday morning. So this must have been around that 4.30 time. According to her husband, she watched the girls get into their car alone she reportedly heard two boys sitting on the curb across the street call out to Susan. Uh, Sue, uh, she said, Sue, hey, Sue. But Susan reportedly did not acknowledge the summons. For hour, four hours later, at 8.30 a.m. Friday, uh, let's see, some, Trooper Lewis Sturr cruising along the parkway about eight miles from the Ocean City rooming house, found the blue convert, uh, convertible sitting off the edge of the highway. According to Lieutenant Brennan, Stir reported that the car was not at the strip of the woods. What if, what if they picked up a hitchhiker? You know, 19 years old, back in 1969, they're driving, they're rich, they want to show that they can help somebody. So some hitchhiker, because that's actually another technique that some of these killers use, is that they were actually the hitchhiker. You know, especially back in back in those times. No, YouTube's the same with membership and uh, Super Chats, but I still rely on the Super Chats memberships uh, to do the donations, and then I usually throw in a bonus with my PayPal at the end of the month. That's why it's always bigger. Like, if I actually literally did the percentage off of that, there wouldn't be anywhere near $2,000, 2500 No, I don't get it's the same percentage for both membership and YouTube just, you know. Uh the the better deal for me is Patreon in uh in terms of like they don't take hardly anything, but er I keep having people jumping off of Patreon because of the COVID deal. It's getting smaller and smaller. And then and, and my channel membership is getting smaller as well. So it's kind of been struggling a little bit lately. I mean, you guys can tell. Remember how it used to be? I mean, the thing is, it used to be on here where, you know, I'd have nights where it'd be like 150, 300, and then it made the, the donations at the end of the month easy. Now it really struggles to get over 100, see? It's like it just gets lucky. Like last night, I just happened to have J. Case and um, Juju Positive, and they donated. But other than that, there was 30 bucks. 
for a, a, f- a four hour show. Can you imagine? You do a four hour show, and so that comes out to less than the minimum wage that everybody wants to um, to want. The fifteen dollars an hour would have been sixty, right? <laughs> so, you know, that's the thing that's it gets it's frustrating, you know. It's frustrating because I want to keep up the donations and it's also frustrating to put that much time in to getting a show together. And, you know, I know times are like that, but it's just the way it is. Right. I'm on every night, though. That's exactly right. Yep. That's why. That's how come we were able to donate $18,000 so far this year. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it is a little bit. I mean, it was cool to have Juju positive, but I don't want them to have to... It should just be like these little tiny, you know. So, anyways, it's not really... (laughs) It's not... I mean, I'm just telling you guys because I can tell you guys stuff, but usually somebody hears this and then they'll type in something in the comments, some stupid-ass comment. And, uh, you know, it always makes me feel bad, but it just... It is what it is, you know. I got to be able to tell you guys. Yeah, I mean, it'd be great, but right now, because... Hey, thanks, Dottie Ocasby versus Ron. Somebody jumped in and is, was pretending to be me out there, and I th- thought maybe they were hijacking my account because when I went to the show where they were on, it actually tagged me when people were tagging that same person. So I told YouTube about it. Hey, thanks, Berserker Loki. And I told YouTube about it, and what they did was <clears throat> they actually turned off all the notifications for my channel so you can't find me if you do a YouTube search right so you do a YouTube search and I'm not going to show up because they want it they want to make sure that the person who quote hijacked it isn't putting stuff out that isn't mine and I said well how long is that going to take before my account gets back to normal and they said well you know maybe a few days or a few weeks Uh, we'll let you know (laughs) it's just it's really ridiculous, everybody. So um, I, I have the account. I, I, you know, I have a new password, and now I have two. Uh, what do you call it? like two source verification? So you know, nobody's going to be able to sign on anymore to my account if they did. But it's crazy that they just absolutely. So if you look at the views for the last two night shows, they're about a thousand less than normal. It's like basically only people that are channel members that happen to look or something or, you know, uh, they subscribe, they're going to see it. Yeah, no, it sucks. Jersey represent, yeah. Yeah, and then it's also, um, you know, somebody was saying, it's not my channel. Uh, see, the thing is, is when you know when you send a super chat in and you look at it on your bill, it doesn't say Gray Hughes Investigates. It says YouTube Super Chat. So if your bank is having issues, it's with YouTube, not a specific channel on YouTube. It just means that your bank thinks that Facebook or YouTube or whatever are... It's unrecognized, so they're wondering what it is. Yeah, so maybe just subscribers. That's right. Well, only subscribers would get a notification, Christine. That's how it works. But it's also where if I was covering something like the election or something right now, and I and my title was, 2020 election and somebody typed it in they would never find me because they've made it so that I'm not findable here I'll read to you what the last email said just for the hell of it um let me see 
trying to find there it is right there it says hi there thanks for asking because I said how long does it normally take I do live shows every day I, I want my channel members to be able to get notified etc and he said hi there thanks for asking the normal hijacking process takes days to weeks I am sorry if I cannot pinpoint a specific time do not worry we are on top of this issue and we will do our best to resolve it quickly. We will keep you posted. Okay, and then here's what it says over here. I mean, I'm not making this shit up. It's right here. It says, hi there. Thanks for chatting with us today. Our specialists are looking into whether your Google account has been compromised. To prevent any further potential harm to your account channel while we work, we've taken the following actions. We've hidden your latest videos and live streams in search and discovery. We do this in case these uploads are the result of unauthorized access. Your content will be available in search and discovery again once the recovery process will be completed. Isn't that great? <laughs> it just sucks. Hey, thanks, Susanna Macchiolio. Or Mac Giola Padre. Yeah, so there you go, everybody. Good times. Good times. Yeah, that's that's really great, uh, Bogey 70, uh, 708. Is that the only case that you ever follow? The Delphi case? I mean, I don't know what it has to do with this one. What we're talking about tonight. Um, yeah, well, it's hard for me to, you know, I don't know. Somebody was trying to help me get sponsors a while back. I just, I don't know. Not really sure how that works. Okay, well, go go somewhere else if you just want to talk about Delphi. We're, we're covering all kinds of cases here and, and not Delphi tonight, okay? Thanks, Bogey. Have a good evening. Yeah, there's a lot of just total idiots right now in the, that have just popped up out of nowhere in the Delphi case, okay? Lots of them. All right, absolute morons. Um, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, they're, they're putting up videos again where it's flipped horizontally, and they say, where does this one come from? Wow, is this one, uh, was it on a trail camera? No, no, it was just flipped. You notice how it looks exactly? This, it, uh, it's mind-boggling. Okay, so where were we uh, on here? Saw girls in a car. All right, so the, the lady that works at the uh, that home or house that they stayed at saw them in a car. The bizarre series of errors delayed. Okay, let's see. Is it up here? Hey, thanks, Zoza. Wow, look at that. That's no uh, 199. <laughs> Uh, very cool, thanks. Victory! Where's that part we were just talking about? Okay, four hours later... At 8.30 a.m., a trooper found the vehicle sitting off the edge of the highway. Um, according to Lieutenant Brennan, Stir reported that the car was not at the strip of the woods when he passed by an hour earlier. So it was just put there around 7.30, interestingly. Thank you. Uh, the bizarre series of errors and delays in the tragic search started shortly after the trooper found the car. A check of the license number with the Pennsylvania Department of Records indicated the registration number was issued to a Pontiac. A hot sheet check found neither the car nor license tags reported stolen. So the state police impounded the car. In the, Yeah, this is where that problem came. They just impounded in a Northfield garage as abandoned and a safety hazard. They said no further checks were made. 
State police did not link the car with the two co-eds until 8.15 a.m. yesterday when a trooper read the description of a car listed in a missing persons alarm from Ocean City. The alarm had been sent to all police stations in the area at about 2.30 p.m. Sunday, a day after Susan's father, Wesley Davis, had first notified Ocean City police that the cars were missing. Ocean City police declined comment on why they waited more than a day before sending out an alarm. One state trooper explained missing persons reports on teenagers at the shore are rather common and usually unfounded. All right, let's see what else we got here. Last night at Shore Memorial Hospital here, the two fathers were silent and they wept openly. Wow, what a nightmare. Dude. Elizabeth's father, Ray Perry, an executive with the Beeman Bag Company, a paper manufacturer firm in Excelsior, had flown to Camp Hill to await word with the Davises and aid in the search for the two teenagers. Yeah. So there, there's them looking around. During their last three days of life, the girls bought bundles of presents for their families and friends. Sue's in central Pennsylvania, Liz in Midwest. The, so the girl that lived in the mid, Liz lived in the Midwest and had never seen the ocean before. Uh, the girls, two of five rumors at Sybin's house last week, chatted with Sybin and his wife. Uh, see, the girls left saying if they ever returned to Ocean City, they would like to stay with the Sybins again. Parents rule out girls' shorter dates. So I guess they... Hmm. So they had dates? Let's see. The father of the two college girls found slain in Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey, yesterday ruled out boys they had dated at a shore resort as being involved in any foul play. Maybe those were the two girls that were, the two guys that were sitting there that said, Sue, hey Sue. The bodies of Susan Davis of Camp Hill and Elizabeth Perry of Excelsior, Minnesota were found in a wooded area some 200 yards from where their deserted convertible was discovered last Friday on the Garden State Parkway. The Davis girl's father, soft drink bottler, Wesley S. Davis said, we contacted the college boys they had dated shortly after the girls. I mean, it's just, I think it's obvious, I mean, that, that they wouldn't be the ones. I mean, there's no reason to be doing that if you're actually dating somebody, right? Yeah, so let me move on to the next one. Several ruled out in dual murder, so again, they're still looking into it. Uh, co-ed murders, stymie police. So they're, I mean, they're just putting everything into this one. 200 people were questioned. Uh, a camera belonging to Miss Davis had been found in the car. He said the pictures had been of Miss Perry and two young men on the Ocean City Beach. Both boys were questioned and are cleared. Still missing are the keys to the convertible, Brennan said, adding that the car had been taken by a flatbed truck to Trenton for study. So it seems like if they were found 200 yards from the vehicle, that they that that is the last location that the car was driven. It's not like it was just dumped there. If their bodies were found 200 yards away, like in the woods from the vehicle, that's probably where it was last parked. Uh, it could be that they were killed somewhere else driven there but it'd be sort of unlikely that somebody would carry bodies 200 yards right so to me it feels like they were still alive and then walked back there recognize this man he's a killer so apparently new jersey state police released yesterday a sketch of a lanky teenager wanted for questioning in the stabbing deaths of two 19 year old co-eds near summers point and said it may be, may be involved in the Ann Arbor, Michigan co-ed murders. 
The fathers of two slain girls, Susan Davis and Elizabeth Perry, appeared at a news conference at the state police barracks where they offer a joint $20,000 reward for information. I mean, that's a ton of money back then. That's like 100000 Miss Davis of Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, and Miss Perry of Excelsior, Minnesota, were found knifed to death in underbrush June 2nd near the Garden State Parkway after they had vacationed for four days in Ocean City. And you remember some of these other cases that we've talked about where people visiting the area? It's very, very weird. Asked if there were good reasons to believe the man in the sketch was involved, both the Summers Point and Michigan murder cases. State Police Lieutenant James R. Brennan said yes, without elaborating. Hmm. Almost kind of looks, uh, I don't know, looks mildly Asian or something. Uh, the composite drawing made by a New Jersey State Police artist, which was handed to newsmen, showed a young white youth in his late teens. Police said he has a slender build and his medium brown hair, curly, and that was hung down over his forehead. Police said he was wearing a white t-shirt when he was observed in the vicinity of Miss Davis. According to police state uh, statement, two witnesses who were not identified were passing by a by in a car and observed the man. The drawing was made from the description the witnesses supplied. Brennan said two state police detectives are now in the Michi in Michigan to talk with police there to determine if there is any connection with the with their uh, series of murders and the investigation here. Two suspects, seven young women, have been murdered in the past two years in Ypsilanti and Arbor area of southeastern Michigan. One suspect is currently under arrest in Michigan in connection with the most recent of the slangs and, mother, and another man was picked up this week in Arizona after being linked to the other man. I just think there was just, you know, my friend Ada used to always say that there was more, I don't know, I think there were kind of like more blatantly active serial killers back during this time because they, they didn't think they could ever get caught, you know. Now, state authorities examined a Bundy link now. I mean, they actually wanted to see if Ted Bundy was linked to this. Authorities are evaluating evidence that serial sex killer Ted Bundy may have killed two young women on, on the Garden State Parkway. But Atlantic County Prosecutor Jeffrey S. Blitz said yesterday the evidence so far has not been particularly helpful. Authorities have never solved the Memorial Day 1969 stabbing of Susan Davis and Elizabeth Perry, 19-year-old college friends. This is an article from uh, 1989, so they're talking about them again. There was no evidence that either had been sexually assaulted, as were most of Ted Bundy's victims. But Arthur Norman, the Portland, Oregon psychologist, who came forward shortly after Tuesday's execution, told the Associated Press the murders were Bundy's first. Ah, oh, really? Wow. Let me read this part again. Authorities have never solved the Memorial Day 1969 stabbings of Susan Davis and Elizabeth Perry, 19-year-old college friends, whose bodies were found hidden under leaves on the side of the parkway in Summers Point. The murders sparked what at the time was called one of the most intensive manhunts in South Jersey history. There was no evidence that either had been sexually assaulted, as were most of Ted Bundy's victims, but Arthur Norman, the Portland, Oregon psychologist, shout out to Portland, huh? uh, Portland, Oregon psychologist who came forward shortly after today's execution, I think he was executed at, in 1989, Ted Bundy, told the Associated Press Associated Press that the murders were Bundy's first and he was overwhelmed 
It was, oh my God, what have I done? Norman was quoted as saying. That's why it was very important because it was a, was a start, according to him. How does he know that, though? He added, I don't know whether it's true, but that's what he told me. Whoa. So he's actually saying that Ted, Ted Bundy told them that he killed them. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it, Cairo. Uh, what what it'll be though? It, it's going to be a specific thing. They're going to say if you um, if you take the mushrooms that are legal and you kill, it's legal. So, and we, you can either have pot and kill or mushrooms and kill in Portland, and it'll be legal. Okay, there you go. All right. Um, he added, I don't know whether it's true, but that's what he was told. He told me. So that means the psychologist is saying that Ted Bundy mentioned them. And you sort of believe that because why would Ted Bundy even know about those two? I mean, I understand, you know, we, they're all probably interested in those kind of things, but it's sort of interesting. He added, I don't know whether it's true. Blitz, after talking to Norman yesterday, told reporters that Norman had drawn conclusions beyond what Bundy actually told him, and there's no corroborating evidence. Okay, there you go. Well, who knows then? Bundy told him in 1986 and 87 that he was in the area, more specifically in the spring of 1969, and he picked up two girls. Okay, this is what Bundy said. He told him in 1986 and 1987, the psychologist, before he was executed, that he was in the area more specifically in the spring of 1969. And he picked up two girls in the shore area. He was not specific as to what shore. I assume it was Jersey Shore, Blitz said. Well, I mean, definitely a possibility, right? And it was, it was more like June, so... Uh, but that might have seemed like the spring. Maybe he doesn't remember... For now, Blitz said, I do not find the information particularly helpful. All right. And then there was another article in 1993. Slain woman's family blames serial killer for 24-year-old crime. In the memories of those who love them, Susan Davis and Elizabeth Perry are forever 19, and they were, and they were that Memorial Day weekend, 1969, or as they were. All that the college pals would have be, uh, become was ended here 24 years ago by an evil intruder who brutalized and killed them in the woods just off the Garden State Parkway. Now, let's see. But the parents of Elizabeth Perry said in the days leading up to this year's holiday, they are at peace because they believe their daughter was avenged when serial killer Theodore Bundy was executed. So they believe that story. Hmm. There was never enough to say for sure that he did it. You know, probably give them a sense of like, you know, having that chapter closed. Not closure, but, you know, like it allowed them to say, okay, now we know who did it. And they don't have to keep thinking about it. Yeah. So there you go. That is that case. Let me read what they have written here. Maybe it's more specific. Abducted in or from their vehicle. They were cut, stabbed, and scratched with a short pen or paring knife. Some superfi uh, superficial knife scratches. Bruised and beaten. Evidence of sexual assault. One victim found nude with fatal wound to the neck. The other victim wearing torn, disheveled garments with fatal stab wound to chest. Friday morning, murder on Garden State Parkway. Susan Davis and Elizabeth Perry were last seen alive on Friday, May 30th, 1969 at 4.30 a.m. in Ocean City, having breakfast at the Summers Point Diner, 8 MacArthur Boulevard, Oh, there you go. So, let's see. 
in Ocean City, having breakfast at the Summers Point Diner. Let's see, 1969, fourth. So they actually made it to there before heading north to their baby blue Chevy, heading north in their baby blue Chevy convertible on the Garden State Parkway. Later that Friday, their car was found parked about two miles north of the Summers Point Ocean City Interchange. Okay, so I think what they're saying is, where the hell is that? Right there? Yeah, right there. So two miles north, and there's the Garden State Parkway. So I bet you that's what this is. I bet it's more like right here, this turn, and that's just what it seems like. And then maybe you go two miles north of here, and maybe something like, yeah, maybe up in this area. You know, maybe some somewhere around in there. Could be. Um, okay, later that Friday, their car was found parked about two miles north of the Summer Point Ocean City Interchange near Mile Post. There we go, 31.9. So that would be easy. Let me see if I just went down to the street there. I like when the states have the decimals because that way you don't have to walk a thousand miles. You can just <laughs> look how close that was. <laughs> Boom! Look at that. That one's 31.8. Okay. So we're talking about when I just did my little guess a minute ago, when I measured the two miles, it was literally um, like, almost exactly on the spot let me see if it's if it's this way <laughs> hey come on that was pretty close just for a, a stab in the dark right and it might be the other direction so let me see and nope that's it so here we go this is where the car was about Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking. From right there, you go two miles, and then it's right up in that area. So, right here, and then their bodies were found probably 200 yards out in the middle of there. Let's see if what it looked like in 1991. Ooh, yeah, 91, there was nothing there. Almost completely, and we're talking about 20 years, 22 years before this, right? Look at that damn thing. There's nobody out there. And then you go now, all kinds of homes. And so it's actually possible. 200 yards, they were saying. I wonder how they were found. Uh, oh, they found the car and then searched the woods, I would imagine. Yeah, so this is about 200 yards is about like this. So, I mean, if they were over here, they built homes where they were. That's kind of a dicey little shed in the middle of the woods for no reason. I'm sure they had a reason now, right? Well, of course, you got to toot your horn there, Zozo, or if because if you don't, nobody's gonna, right? Plus, it's always exciting, you know. When you, when you actually land on a spot. It just shows you that doing this over time, you know, you get more, it, it's easier to, it's like, you know when people that built, put puzzles together all the time? They can do it really uh, quickly after a while. Okay, uh, move on to the, another one now, Joyce Coleman. All right. So Joy, this is Joyce Coleman right here. She's 28, or was 28, 1970 now. 
okay and let me close that down these so housewife beaten to death a young oh well, here's another pregnant person right a young pregnant housewife was found beaten and stabbed to death today in her home in Morris County community. The victim was Mrs. Joyce Coleman, 28, whose fully clothed body was found in her, or by her husband, Wayne, 28, when he returned from a night shift at the uh, trucking firm where he worked. Let's see. Police said Miss Coleman was found lying in a pool of blood on the floor of the recreation basement in the $50,000 Coleman home. The house had been ransacked and several guns and a quantity of ammunition were stolen. The Coleman's son, Wayne Jr., 14 months, was found unharmed in an upstairs bedroom. See, this doesn't sound like a, a husband at this point where she's pregnant and needs to, you know, because they already have a kid, you know. It's usually when somebody's got a mistress or something, then they've got, she's pregnant for the first time, and he doesn't want to have to deal with that, right? So in this case, and also there's guns missing, and the house is ransacked. Police said Coleman told them he tried to telephone his wife shortly before he returned home at 1.45 a.m., to tell her he was on his way, but that he got a busy signal, so the phone must have been taken off the hook. They said Coleman told them the telephone operator said the receiver was off the hook. There we go. A search of the house failed to turn up a murder weapon, because I actually remember the times when there was actually wired phones, and you'd leave a phone off the hook and it would be busy, where a lot of you in here, uh, you, you only remember the cell phone days. Actually, probably not. Most of you are... When I look at my analytics, I think the... Uh, it's like 44 to 50 is the highest views. Something like that. Females. I think females are way more into true crime than guys are. They like to uh, figure out puzzles and figure stuff out. Let's see. Uh, a search of the house failed to turn up a murder weapon. Police theorize Miss Coleman may have been slain when she super uh, surprised a burglar. But why would she have surprised the burglar? Wouldn't she have just been at home? Police threw a dragnet around the area of West Morris Regional High School. Okay. Hey, look, look at that. I got Delphi up on the screen. <laughs> Actually, I was trying to find out what the hell frame earlier that guy was trying to make a video about. Um, a young housewife was found stabbed and beaten to death today in her home. The victim was Miss Joyce Coleman, 28. An autopsy was ordered. There wasn't a ton on this one. Police hunt clues in her murder. Police today reported no arrests and no suspects in the murder of a pregnant 28-year-old housewife, Joyce Coleman. Mrs. Coleman was found yesterday fully dressed by her husband, Wayne C. Coleman. So that's interesting that she was fully dre dressed. But it sort of, that sort of does match the robbery-murder angle. You know, not a sort of a predator-type uh, situation. Wayne C. Coleman in the basement recreation room of, of the home at 2.45. Let's see. Let me get to that one. 2.45. Barley Road. And in, in Morris, let's see. Barley Road in semi-rural Morris County. Okay. That's probably it right there. So 
So I guess out there. I don't see a home there. Does it look different back in 95? Oh, maybe it was just, it's one of these properties here. Like maybe that one. And that's just part of the big property. Like this whole area right here, it might be the property. The house located on a plot of four wooded acres. There you go. See? It's a big, it's a big plot. Had been ransacked, police said, but 14 months old Wayne Jr. upstairs in his crib had not been harmed. It almost makes you think that the guy may have, she may have known who this was and thus had to kill her. Because it seems, you know, whenever you have these, you know, somebody, um, you go into, there's a robbery going on, burglary, and the person kills them. I mean, it seems like it's so much overkill to kill somebody if they don't even know who the hell you are. You know, like they have no clue who you are. So it seems like you would kill, though, if you if they knew that you knew who they were. Right. More often. I mean, I know it does happen to complete strangers, but it seems like it's like psychologically a killer would kill the person in the home more often if they knew that they could be identified by that person. The examiner, Dr. Andrew Good, said Miss Coleman died between 8 p.m. Thursday and the time police arrived at 2 a.m. Police had been called by the husband who said he had just returned from his job as a supervisor. Dr. Good said the victim had received several deep cuts police report and especially that type of you know God, just bizarre I mean obviously they checked everybody that she knew police find evidence in slang so let's see what this says this is the last article I could find but police have found a fireplace poker so that's what she was hit with and a hunting knife and other pieces of evidence in a search of a woodland near the home of an attractive young housewife found brutally murdered. So they threw their, you know, they probably used the, took weapons from inside the home. But they reported nothing further yesterday in their investigation of the slaying of Miss Joyce Coleman, 28, who was found beaten and stabbed to death in the recreation room of her home in the Morris County community. Miss Coleman was six months pregnant. Neighbors described her as, a, as very attractive and sort of girl-next-door type. Police said her husband, Wayne, 28, discovered the body when he returned from his job on the night shift of a trucking concern where he worked as a supervisor. The house had been ransacked and four guns and a quantity of ammunition belonging to Coleman were stolen, police said. The Coleman's son, Wayne Jr., 14 months, was found unharmed in an upstairs bedroom. The slaying was discovered on the day Mrs. Coleman was to sign papers for the sale of the bi-level house valued at about $45,000. The house was being sold, Coleman said, because his employer... Charter Bolt Service of Newark planned to transfer him to Georgia or Massachusetts. Hmm. Police said Coleman told them he tried to phone his wife shortly before he returned home to tell her he was on his way, but that he got a busy signal. Police theorized Miss Coleman may have been slain when she surprised the burglar. It seems like she would have already been there, though. I don't know how... It seems like he would have surprised her. I mean, yeah, like that. It doesn't appear there was much of a struggle, Police Chief Charles... And, and that makes more sense, right? He surprised her and, and hits her right away, and there was no struggle. Police threw a dragnet around a wooded area near West Morris Regional High School, not far from the Coleman home, 
They also search the four acres of the Coleman property. Let's see, West Morris Regional High School. Okay, right there. I wonder why they would search over there. Oh, that's the school district. There's the high school right there. It's not called that, obviously, anymore. Now it's called West Morris Regional High School District, just like this other building over there. So... That's her house, and then they checked all around this area. Yeah, I think the baby was like in a crib. And let me, I'm just going to go over the final file that was in that folder. You know, it's weird going over these cases. Uh, that, that serial killer we mentioned, Alves, earlier. And there's also Richard F. Cottingham and Robert Zarinsky. See, they all three of them show up in all these cases in that time period in New Jersey. Isn't that wild? There's that many serial killers out there that are just... Okay, so then here's the final, nothing on there. Found in a basement recreation room by husband. Um, Post-mortem cuts to the neck, no sexual assault. Rifles and a shotgun. It's interesting that they were selling the house that day, though. That part's, you know, it's pretty interesting, right? Because why, I mean, what are the, you know, what are the odds that on that one day that you were selling the house, you were supposed to sign papers that you get killed? Although I'm sure, you know, he probably ended up selling it anyways and moved. Yeah. It could be what you were saying. Let me see. It was Karinsky, K-R-K-A-R-I-N-S-K-Y. Okay, now we're going to move on to uh, Carol Hill. Okay, but I'm going to take a break for a minute. <laughs> wow, look how bright my the light is on my face. Hold on, let me fix this shit. like I think I need to uh, what do I turn that exposure down there's brightness contrast maybe saturation <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I don't know if that's good enough, but I was like, uh, I was like orange. I looked like Trump for a second there. Yeah. Well, you can now, right?
Now that the party is jumping, 
with a bass kick boom and the vagas are pumping quick to the point cause the point no faking cooking in seas like a pound of bacon burning them being quick and nimble I go crazy when I hear the stumble with a high hat with a suit of tempo I'm on a roll time to go solo rolling in my fire for an old with my rag top pants and my hair can blow the girl is on standby waiting just to say hi did she stop? no just drove my pep on press through and do the next stop I bust the left I'm headed to the next spot the fuck was good y'all so I continue to a one Detroit Avenue, girls were hot there, messed in bikinis, rockin' in love, was droppin' on the guineas, jealous? Cause I'm up with mine, shade was a gay dude, I never was a nine, gunshot, rings out like a bell, I got a nine of a hood with shells, falling, on the concrete, real fast, up in my car, slammed on the gas, up the up Avenue's packed, trying to get away from the jack is jack, police were on the scene, you know what I mean? They're passing me up, they found a lot of loot things, if there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it, check out the hook with my DJ Revolve. Hey, yo, right, John Boy, yee! <laughs> that almost worked, like, right to the end there. Crazy, eh? Huh? There you go. Mary Lou and John Boy. Now, if that isn't worth a couple super chats, I don't know what is. Okay, let's be honest. I mean, tell me any other true crimer out there that busts out a couple of those, huh? All right, where are we going? Yeah, now we're on to Carol Hill. <laughs> hey, thanks, Kuba Check. Kuba Check. Kuba Check, Kuba Check. <laughs> All right. I liked Kubi too, but Kubicek was sort of was more rang off. You know, it was like Kubicek, you know. Hey, thanks, Juju Positive. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, it was weird. I didn't think that. Well, I always tell people Ice Ice Baby can be sang to any single song that was ever written. Like you can sing it to Yesterday or <laughs> maybe not that song, but you know. Oh, and thanks, Lee D. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. It, it all went through one song, too, and it went right to the end where the song was over, right after the third verse. That's when I knew I could do it karaoke because I, I have the, all the words basically memorized. All right, here we go. This is this is this victim right here, Carol Hill, 20, 1970, and this is in June, which is literally only eight days after the uh, the last case we just talked about with the two friends, or two cases ago. Joyce Coleman was last. So this is Carol Hill here. Juju positive. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I gotta make a rap about you guys. That'd be hilarious. Instead of just repeating ones that are old. <laughs> yep. Okay. And if you're not a channel member, you should become a channel member. Uh, they're, you know, the lowest membership's really cheap. You can, uh, and you have access to all the emojis that everybody used to use, but we're not seem to be using them as much anymore. Maybe I need to come up with some new ones. You know, some of the ones like, maybe I need to make, I don't know what to make. Make a flower or something. Correct. Yeah. See, look how we only have 137 watching. That's because it doesn't show up anymore. You know, you're, nobody's gonna find us at all anymore just because normally we would have 250 watching right maybe 300 but it's because now 
I don't even show up on a result screen for like a live show. You see, the only reason any of you are here are because you're either a subscriber or you, um, you know, yeah, I mean, that's it, a subscriber. That's, I mean, normally you get like a couple hundred people that are just randomly showing up, but it doesn't even show up. Isn't that wild? 136. Normally we have 300, but because of the investigation, my account's got a crazy disposition on it. I almost want to say, hey, can you guys just forget looking into it at this point? Okay. So now this case, uh, I just showed you the picture of it. Soldier's wife murdered, raped on Wildwood Beach. Uh, police are searching for the murder of Mrs. Carol Hill, 20, of Philadelphia, whose body was found buried beneath a mound of sand. And by the way, in that case, two cases ago with the, the two friends, and they say they weren't, there's no evidence of sexual assault. I mean, give me a break, okay? They were both, one was completely nude. You don't think there was a sexual component of, and there's something going on there? Uh, Miss Hill's family said she, let's see, uh, 20 of Philadelphia, whose body was found buried beneath a mound of sand under a beach pier here Monday morning. Uh, Mrs. Hill's family said she had gone to the shore Thursday. Now we got the shore angle again, with as well as those same two girls that were eight days apart. I mean, don't you think this is, this this one here could be related to the same person. I really think so, because... Remember the other ones, I think, uh, had leaves put on top of them? Well, now we've got sand on top of them at the beach. You're talking about um, the shore again. Thanks, Fiber Sleuth. Yeah, that's pretty close, right? Half hour. For the murder of Miss Carol Hill, 20, of Philadelphia, whose body was found buried beneath a mound of sand, Miss Hill's family said she had gone to the shore Thursday evening with a male acquaintance named Tom. Her husband, Sanford, is away in the Army. Police said Miss Hill apparently died from asphyxiation. She was strangled when some foreign matter had been crammed down her throat said officials. Jesus, that's not really strangling. You know? Um, yeah, it's more asphyxiation, but it says she was strangled when some foreign matter had been crammed down her throat. I thought strangling was when you put something around somebody's neck. I don't know. Police said Mrs. Hill had been raped and apparently subjected to other sexual abuses. Huh. Weird. What, what, are, what do you mean I mean, she was raped and others subjected and apparently subjected to other sexual abuses. What do you think that might mean? Two policemen making a... I don't... I think this means... Police said Miss Hill apparently died from asphyxiation. That's it. She was strangled when, when someone... When some foreign matter had been crammed down her throat. So they're saying that's how she died, with the foreign matter crammed down her throat... I wouldn't think that, I think that would be more like suffocation or asphyxiation, not strangulation. Thanks, Dadio Caspian Horses Rock. Police said Miss Hill had been raped and apparently subjected to other sexual abuses. Two policemen making a routine check of the beach under Hunt's Pier shortly after midnight spotted the mound of sand. Long strands of hair, of dark hair, uh, protruded from the sand, which had been carefully packed around and over her body, including in her mouth. Huh. Wildwood subject, uh, Wildwood Public Safety Commissioner Joseph Fury said there were no apparent signs of a struggle at the death scene and added the slaying could have occurred elsewhere. Meanwhile, state police from Abascon Barracks joined the investigation on the possibility it may be related to the knifing deaths of two 19-year-old co-eds, there you go, near Summers Point. Oh, this is one year ago, so it's the same. Oh, that's right. Well, hold on, there you go. 
Oh, that's right. It was a year ago, and that was in uh, it was in May. So we had Joyce Coleman. Joyce Coleman, and now we're on Carroll Hill. So they were 1969, May 30th. Okay, we're, another one's coming up in a minute that's literally a week later. Okay, I, was, I misread that one. All right, so the, the two 19-year-olds, they were 1969, May 30th, and this is, um, we're now talking about Carroll Hill, which is June 7th, 1970, so about a, 13 months later. And then the next case we'll be talking about is one week later. All right. So they think they're trying to see if there's a connection between those two 19-year-old co-eds, the murder of Elizabeth Perry of Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, and Susan Davis. So there you go. And look, there's actually a shot of the where they were found. And that looks like a, what is, what is that? Is that a pier there? Or kind of looks like something, like almost looks like a roller coaster ride the way it's set up like that. Searches for clues beneath pier where body of Carol was found. This is the... Uh, to be one of the last to see Carol alive. This is the Tom, the guy named Tom, has been questioned by Philadelphia police. I mean, how come, if they did go to there together, how did she end up dead and he's just at home? And that was in this article. You can see part of his head right there, but I just wanted to pull that out by itself. Thanks, Tracy. A major lead in the investigation of the rape murder of a Philadelphia woman and evaporated overnight with the freeing of two possible suspects following lie detector tests in Philadelphia. I think this is... Oh, yeah. Authorities here said that the two men, one of whom was identified as the companion who had taken Miss Carol Hill 20 to the shore last Friday had been released after they passed lie detectors test. Me now because those are so amazing. The men were identified as Wilbert Lauer and Robert Goodwin, both of Philadelphia. Authorities said they would summon for questioning several persons in the area who had been heard to mention the dead woman's name. Mrs. Hill's body was found by police about 12:15 a.m. yesterday beneath a mound of sand under Hunt's Pier and Amusement Center. So that maybe that was a roller coaster. That makes sense now. Let's see. Hunt's Pier. Hunt's Point Floating Pier. Is that? that doesn't sound right. I mean, that could be, though, but that's, I think that's in New York. Yeah, it's in New York. Well, I thought I saw a roller coaster in the picture. I said that. Were you not paying attention, Gene? Right here? In the background there? That looks sort of like uh, some kind of roller coaster, maybe. That's what I thought. I don't know for sure what it is. It looks like maybe that's the ocean there, and then... But that doesn't look like a pier that was built like that. Yeah, a slide, whatever the hell it is. You know, it looks like something that's not a pier because it keeps getting higher and higher and higher, right? Hmm. Hunt's Pier, an amusing, uh, amusement center. An autopsy revealed she had been slain about 10 p.m. Sunday, dying as a result of either manual strangulation or from having sand stuffed into her mouth. Okay, now, now they're saying it's two different things. 
Uh, Dr. Milton Ackerman, Deputy Medical Examiner of Cape May in Atlantic Counties, were performing, performed the autopsy yesterday. Police said she registered alone Friday at the Alton Motel. Let's see where that is. That will give us a better idea. Alton Motel. Oh, it's still there, if you can believe that. Man, what are the odds of that? I think. Oh, no, it's the Alton Motel. <laughs> you know what's weird is it even has the same street name. Look at Alton Motel, Market Street. Now that says Alton, Missouri, but the other one is on, um, yeah, Alton Motel. So this is on Alton Motel, East Wildwood Avenue. Okay, that says a Paradise Inn. I wonder if that's what it used to be called, though. The Paradise Inn. And I don't know if that used to be what it was called, but that's where it went when I typed that in. I said um, Alton Motel on East Wildwood Avenue. Maybe it's the only motel that's on Wildwood Avenue. But it is Wildwood Avenue, so that's important. And so maybe that beach is closer to here. Let's see if I typed in, what, what's the name of this town here? That's a Wildwood, let's see. Amusement Park near Wildwood. New Jersey. Okay, here's a whole bunch of them. Oh, there you go. Maybe it's that one then. And there's an amusement park right there. But see, all of these are, right? Look at these. Crazy. Let me see what it looks like down on the uh, the boardwalk down there. See, look at that. I mean, doesn't that look... I mean, you can just tell in the background it's something like that, right? <laughs> so that's the motel. And then, so what are they saying here then? About three blocks from where her body was found. So that that's a good indicator there. So let's see, one, two, three. I bet it's this one right here. This one's too far, and this one is almost perfect. One, two, three, right here. I, th I bet you it's this amusement park, and and that is almost where we were just looking. Let me let me do the photo uh, aspect of Google Earth. You know there's going to be a ton of photographs. There we go. Now we can use one of these. Okay, a ride. It's on the boardwalk. So that's it looking back the other direction. But I think she was probably found near this area right here. That's what I'm saying. You want me to treat you badly, Dadio? You're you are. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> what do I say, Dadio? <laughs> yeah, Gene. That's right. I love all of you. Okay. Yeah, I can be a jerk sometimes. That's true. 
You want me to be mean to you, Daddy O Cast Me Nurses Rock? I don't know how to do it. You don't really say anything like Gene Fish does. Gene Fish will you will wait three minutes into a case and she'll say Sounds like his mom beat him as a child. And he'd spend hours in the basement staring at his computer screen. Probably killed six dogs. Like, literally within a minute. Uh, and it's like, come on, Gene. All right. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Right, there you go. Yeah, he was a narcissist. <laughs> That's wrong, Dadio. That's wrong. That's wrong, Dadio. You're wrong, man. Oh, see? Ray, you're so mean. <laughs> <laughs> I got I guess there's so much let me turn this light down or something. I feel like that my face is blown out. I hit this thing where I changed the, um, I just went back to the defaults and it screwed up everything. All right, what if I just go, oh, there you go. I think that's, maybe like that, is that better? Okay. Oh, well, look at that. I was thinking Dottie O was going to get me out of jail for being so mean to her. But uh, it didn't work. Now I'm, whatever that is, $3.87 in the hole. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that one, QB. Yeah. Whew. Wow. That was a good one. Oh boy, here comes Gene Fish. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. There you go. Thanks, Dadio. Nah, not really, Lori Durham. Not really. We're just like a family in here and have fun. You're just one of the trolls that show up because nobody likes it when you show up to their, their channel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Daddy issues. Hell, these guys, they all blast me into oblivion. Are you guys kidding me? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. See, Lori Durham is one of those people that when she looks in the mirror every day, just goes, God, I suck. Let me try to ruin somebody else's day. Yeah. Troll alert. Troll alert. Whoop. Bitch, please. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Back to the... Uh, I got to get back to this one. Okay. Right there. Body found. Okay. We already did that one. All right. Okay. Okay, you meant that as a joke? See, you know what you got to do, Lori? You got to read the room a little bit better. You know, that's such a horrible... It's, I mean, there's no... Listen, there's no humor value to what you said at all. You, you understand that, right? Hey, thanks, Gene Fish. Yeah. I mean, there's zero... Uh, <laughs> but thank you, uh, Lori, for, you know, helping me out with some super chats there. Thanks, Gene Fish, and in the middle of nowhere, Bear. So here's the thing is you got to, uh, yeah, when? About an hour after? Yeah.
Writing LMAO doesn't mean that it's a joke. It means they're laughing at how... See, if I said, if I said something like, you guys are all idiots, LMAO, that means I'm laughing at how stupid all of you are. Okay, that's all I'm saying. So, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll accept that she was joking, but it sure as hell doesn't come off as one. And if any of you think you knew she was joking, you're lying, okay? Now, you, you didn't get it, Zozo. You didn't get it, okay? You're just trying to say it now. Not one soul got it. But anyways, I get what you're saying, all right? Yeah. And well, the reason Zozo's saying she got it is because she makes similarly crazy comments out of nowhere. But we've all understood it now. When she does it, we kind of go, oh, that's Zozo. She's being funny. But when somebody random shows up without a history of those kind of comments, it seems like it's serious. Yeah, everybody knows what it means. Like, you have daddy issues, you know, because I'm sitting here. I mean, everyone gets that, but it's not really funny. So it doesn't matter if you got it. Everybody in the whole chat got what that was meant. Okay, but not one. There wasn't funny at all, though. There isn't in a, there's no humor value to it. So that's all I'm saying. No, I don't think he would have been better. Would have been better is just not to do that joke and do a different one. You see? That, that's how it works. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you always think it's funny. Yeah. I'm daddy issue shaming now. Yeah, I don't think there's anybody out there that didn't get it, you know, like. It just didn't seem that funny at all. I mean, there's, you know, I have a pretty good sense of humor. I can laugh at shit. That's not funny. Um, let's see. I think it was disrespectful is what it was. Man, I gotta figure out this lighting. It looks stupid. It's like a like I'm in a cave or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to fix what I used to have a different setting. Maybe I need to go over to my other setup and see what they had. <laughs> it's okay. Forget it, Lori. It doesn't matter. No big deal. If I had a picture of you, though, I'd put you in my jail cell over here, though. Yeah, and look at the green screen's not really working either. I did get a new light, though, you guys. I got these two, a light, and I bought another one, so they're going to be sitting over here. So I might have a totally different look coming up. Let me get rid of the uh, filter and put it, put it back on again. See what happens. So now you'll see my weird, crazy green background. And then if I put on... Put it on again. No. That doesn't really... Right there. No. It's not working. I'll fix it tomorrow. All right. That's for you, Lori. Chewbacca? Oh, I'll be Chewbacca if you want me to. I know, you, I know you don't have bad intent, but sometimes we get trolled on this channel all the time, and your comment kind of came across as a negative comment. Right? Chewbacca? Oh, I'll be Chewbacca if you want me to. Or how about this? Type it in again, and I'll show you what I should have played. There we go. All right. You guys all have daddy issues. 
<laughs> it's still not funny, okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. There we go. Huh, now they actually, in this article, they have somebody that they saw with her. So even though she was there with a the guy named Tom, apparently she was with somebody else. I'll put you in handcuffs, Lori. <laughs> oh, there we go. We're going down that stupid road now. Oh. Oh, yeah, don't you think she sounded pretty normal? I'll, cheap, I'll beat you back if you want me to be. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, Kyra, are you still out there? Did you ever even have a moment of like, hmm? <laughs> and I'm going to say no. Okay, here we go. So that same case we were talking about with the girl that was found underneath the pier near the amusement park uh, named Carol Hill. Her husband's in the military, but she was down at the beach. Uh, she was staying at a motel near there, and she was down there with a guy named Tom. Apparently he was cleared. Now we've got police are seeking. Police are sleeking, uh, seeking a slender white male, about 23 years of age, which is weird because remember the other person was looked similar to that that killed the two 19-year-olds. Believed to have been with 20-year-old Mrs. Carol A. Hill two hours before she was murdered last Sunday. James O'Neill, uh, Let's see, Cape May County Prosecutor was expected to release an artist's rendering of the individual later today. According to the prosecutor, he is between 20 and 24 years of age, 5 foot 7, and between 150 and 160 pounds with light brown hair. Hold on, let me go look at something. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Look at this. Recognize this man? New Jersey State Police released yesterday a sketch of a lanky teenager wanted for questioning in the stabbing death. So that would have been, you know, he might have been 19 or 20 even. May have been involved in the Ann Arbor, Michigan. The father, let's see, what does the description say? This kind of sounds like the same uh, description, right? Young white youth in his late teens. Police said he has a slender build and has a medium brown hair and curly and hung down over his forehead. Police said he was wearing a white t-shirt when he was observed in the vicinity of Miss Davis convertible at about 8 a.m. on the morning of May 30th. The witnesses who were not identified were passing by in a car and observed the man. Hmm, okay, so let me go back to here, and it said that white male about 23. Now, 19 and 23, he kind of looked similar, right? I mean, who the hell knows? Uh, believed to have been with 20-year-old Carol A. Hill two hours before she was murdered, James A. O'Neill. Uh, according to the prosecutor, he is between 22 and 24 Five seven inches tall, 160 pounds with light brown hair. So, you know, the guy has brown hair too. Didn't say light brown hair, but you know, maybe it's a little sunnier out. Maybe it bleached it a little bit. I don't know. Doesn't say curly though. Miss Hill, Hill, whose nude body was discovered under Hunt's amusement. Okay, now we know that's Hunt amusement park. Maurice Piers, Wildwood, yeah, I don't know, it doesn't really say. <laughs> Jeez. 
Jeez. Man. There we go. Parks to Ocean City. Ah, it's not Ocean City. To um, Wildwood. Okay, there we go. Let's see what the date, the names of these are. Ocean Oasis, Surfside, Maury's Piers, Adventure Pier. Uh, probably just changed this name over the years. Let's see. I wouldn't class him as being a suspect at present time, he remarked. We just want to question him. We have pinpointed as best we can the comings and going of the girl from the time she got to Wildwood until roughly 8.15 or 8.30 on Sunday. When Mrs. Hill was found, sand was lodged in her throat. A section of insulated wire lay nearby. O'Neill found no similarities between her death and the slaying of Memorial Day 1969 of two former Monticello Junior College co -ed. So they're saying... He didn't see any similarities because they were they were stabbed to death. State authorities examined Bundy's link. So now they're trying to see if this one is related to Bundy. Isn't that crazy? From his death row cell in Florida, he gave investigators confessions or information connecting him to at least 50 murders across the country, including some he wasn't suspected in. Bundy did not talk about the 1969 double murder on the Garden State Parkway in his 11th hour confession, but a psychologist who worked with him until 1987 told Atlantic County authorities this week, this is a 1989 article, that Bundy described the killing to him after several interviews. Okay. And then 1990. Oh, wait, sorry, I'm on. God dang it. They weren't, that wasn't right what I just said. Sorry about that. I got discombobulated. Now, there's no Bundy one on that. Now, look at this. Uh, here's a sketch of this guy, though. And, and everything I did, that last part kind of threw you guys off. Okay, so the part about there was no link to the um, well the, the whole Bundy thing had nothing to do with this one all right I actually was looking in that other folder and then clicked on the next article uh, I meant to be in the folder of Carol Hill so we're still in the Carol Hill one uh, we just read this one right um, as of now there's no connection then the next article and here is this article right here. Now look at that. That's the sketch of what this guy might look like. So now it's just for the hell of it. Let's see what that other one looked like again. God, I mean, that's like a freaking clone. Are you kidding me? I mean, you know, not an absolute clone, but you got the same, you know, a little bit more of a hair parting over here on this side. I don't know. It's similar, you know. Even got, you know, similar nose a little bit small. But it doesn't really matter. You know, the problem is with sketches. They're not photographs. Drawing of a man New Jersey State Police believe raped and murdered Miss Carol Hill in Philadelphia uh, between 22 and 24 years old, 5'7". Yeah. That was 1969. In 1989, state authorities examined... So they did, in this one, they're examining, I think, 
They are examining the Bundy link in that one. So maybe maybe her name is mentioned in both of the, the articles. So it's the same. So I guess they did do a Bundy link. So take I take it back. What I said earlier was right. That's so weird though. The same article. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so that is the case of, oh, God. No, I just did the same damn thing again. Man, I'm like all over the place. <laughs> I just, because <laughs> you know a minute ago when I went and showed you the other sketch, I was went back to that folder again. Oh, my God. Oh, man, it's hard sometimes to get through these folders, but normally I don't make those mistakes, but... Um, and it says, youth cleared in the murder case. A 16-year-old youth was questioned for more than two hours by police seeking clues in the June 7th rape murder of Mrs. Carol Hill 20 of Philadelphia. The youth was cleared by a lie detector test and was no longer under suspicion. So I wonder if that's the kid. He had been arrested in Atlantic City Sunday by juvenile authorities on a complaint by his mother who accused him of breaking and entering her home and stealing. Police said he was an acquaintance of Miss Hill. Miss Hill's body was found underneath a pier in the resort city. Yeah, and then this is the final breakdown here again. I know, man, I was all over the place. A uh, victim was raped, bruises and bite marks found on neck. Jeez. Man, that, that, that was something new. Sunday night murder. That's when, it, when she was murdered on a Sunday night. Ligature strangulation and asphyxiation by sand, sand stuffed into her mouth. On Monday, June 8, 1970, members of the Wildwood Police Department, while on routine patrol, discovered the body of Carol Hill. Investigation also revealed the last known contact with Hill was with a slender, unknown male, about 22 to 24 years of age. So that's a different person. Five foot seven inches, light brown hair. Um, 150 to 160 pounds at the Bolero Bar located. Oh, now we got a an address here. Let's see where that is. Three, 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 two zero, Atlantic Avenue, and that's in Wildwood. That one. Oh, see how close we were. So that's right next to her motel, right there. So that kind of makes it seem like that was her motel. Seen with a slender man. That was called Bolero Bar. I wonder if it's still... Doesn't look like it. Yeah, so that's not there anymore, but... Yeah, so she was seen right there and approximately 9 o'clock on June 7th, 1970. And that's when she was killed, so... That could very well be the person. You know, it's hard to say. You know, she might have had a couple drinks, took a walk down to the pier, you know. It's the middle of the summertime. Person might not have anything to do with it at all. Okay. What time is it? 10.20? Shit. So now we're, we're into that three-hour zone again. I've got two more here, though. Maybe I'll save the other two for tomorrow. How's that sound? <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll, I'll use the same thumbnail, but I'll darken two of them. And then... And then tomorrow I'll use the thumbnail, lighten up two of them. And then remove the other one. Yes, I gotta get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to play golf tomorrow 
with the doing the one club technique again. What is that sign right there, Zozo? What does that mean? Is that like a? It looks like when you score a goal in in footy. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do it. I'm just gonna use like one, a seven iron next. I used a nine iron the one time, but I'm gonna try doing it with a seven iron and my putter, and just kind of just to hang out with everybody. Well, this is a long show tonight. Three is three hours already. You know what I'm saying? Oh, look at that. I got um, two new uh, patrons. How cool is that? You know what's weird is they're both uh, the same name. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Two two people named Christy became uh, Patreons. So thank you, guys. Very cool. What are the odds of that? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um... Here we go. So I want to thank, let me get my, oh, I have my head on there. I gotta, look how crazy the lighting is. I gotta get this fixed. If you turn that on, yeah. Going under the pier is what? Come on, Susanna. She might have been taken under the pier. They didn't say she was seen under the pier. Yeah, it's really dark. I, I'll get it fixed. I just have to... I changed. I hit a button and it changed all the settings. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'll see if there's what she heard about that. That'd be kind of cool. I've never heard that one before, Susanna. Uh, which which golf course are you talking about, Kubi? You mean the one at Bandon Dunes, or what do you mean? The one in Southern Oregon, Bandon Dunes? Yeah, it's on Google Earth. I'm not playing there tomorrow, but that's over here in Southern Oregon, Bandon, well, so Southwestern Oregon. See, it's really, it's really amazing. And they actually are building, 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 Jesus. They're building a, uh, what, when was this taken? So that's 2015. They actually have a new one. See, this is a course that some guy owned, and you can just play where, however you want, like hit a ball here and go over there. Um, but they, Band and Dunes actually bought it. Now they have a fifth course out there. So there's actually five courses now. There is the Band and Trails. I, I think this is that's what this is over here. And then there's Bandon Dunes right there. And then there's Pacific Dunes, Old McDonald. And then they have a fifth one right there. It's crazy. And you have to make your reservations a year, like a month before you go. You make it for the year after that. It's nuts. You know what I wish Google Earth would do more of is have somebody wearing the backpack version and just walk all around to parks and things so you can actually 
you know, be on the trails. and st- they, they do it sometimes, but not enough. Like, it'd be great if somebody just walked each of the holes on here, and then you just can go check it out. And, you know. and a lot of times we stay in... These are Chrome Lake here. These are the... the there's hotels. Everybody stays in the... Um, the rooms that they provide there and a lot of people stay in these chrome lake let's see there's the main lodge you come down yeah yeah. these are the ones that we stayed in for the first few years and then late lately we've been staying in these ones down here right there it's good times good times yeah, in the summer it costs two hundred and fifty dollars a round. We go there in uh, February and it's ninety something, but it's still pretty expensive. But it's just that once a year trip kind of thing. Oh yeah, the, the, there's a guy that works the bar. I'm not sure what's going on with that kind of stuff at this point, but the guy that works the bar downstairs in the main clubhouse. I mean, he must make. $2,000 a night. There's no way he doesn't. I mean, it's packed in there. and It's just... People are gambling and, you know, having fun. I'm not sure how that would work now. I'm kind of thinking they don't even have it. Like, you're not even allowed to... go in there because of COVID. Yeah, but... Anyways. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Uh, let me do the... I like some of these. Thank you, Claudia Dubauer. Oops, doesn't work. <laughs> Yee! Hold on. Claudia Dubauer. Half Rudder. Victoria Ballard. Cairo. Jackie Blue. Jody William. Billy Boy Blue. He needed the money. Kit Kat. Michelle Nicklaus. Christy B. LM. Julie W. Lee D. Dario Caspian Horses Rock. Berserker Loki. Susanna Mac Yilda Padre. <laughs> that name's almost as long as. Don. Er, uh, <laughs> A.K.A. Beaver Gaming Sub Sub Crystal A.K.A. Beaver Gaming Sub Sub Crystal Zozo Kate Kubachek Juju Positive Lee D Fiber Slew Dario Caspian Horses Rock Tracy Lee D. Daddy O. Caspian Horses Rock again. You're so mean. Firefly Shy. Gene Fish. In the middle of nowhere, Bear. Bam! Bam! Yes. Thank you, everybody. Wait, I'm supposed to be talking now. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you all for showing up tonight. Uh, Make sure that you're still wearing your mask, maintaining your social distancing, and uh, washing your hands whenever possible. Or all the time. Not when possible. Just do it. All right, and, uh, you know, Let's see what's going on out there in the world. But make sure that whenever you see uh, the people jubilantly 
celebrating the victory of Joe Biden without social distancing, make sure you let them know that it's not okay, that they, they are being super spreaders and need to uh, keep their hands washed, wear their masks, and maintain social distancing instead of being piled in like sardines into a little area. Okay? All right, great. So that's it, everybody. Thank you very much for uh, supporting the channel and hanging out. And as I always say, everybody, until next time, be safe out there. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector. Detector. I'm a certified human, human lie detector. detector. Gonna get ya on a stretcher. If, if you try, try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector. Who's blowing my up? nectar? Professor Gray is gonna yeah. give another lecture. Crime yes, they'll die laughing. They're the hypocrites. They're, they're hypocrites. They're hypocrites. Fool deflector. Interceptor. And I'll meet a little specter with a lectern. On his peck. Right, Juju Posse. They're hypocrites. I am a pretender. I'm a pretender. I'm a pretender. I'm a pretender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. All right, everybody. Talk to you. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Wait, where the hell was Mary Lou? Yeah, yeah where, where the, the hell? hell? <laughs> we were supposed to say goodnight first. first. Okay. okay. Good night, young boy! Jeez, Gray, I mean, <laughs> you cut into our time. Okay, good night, Mary Lou. Gosh, Gray. I know, what an idiot. <laughs> wow, that's the last time I let you guys uh, come on. I'll tell you that. Yeah, but you, yeah, look at I don't think there's anything wrong with any of them doing it because it's their choice, the, the whole crowd thing. But what I'm speaking of is how absolutely hypocritical people are when they say, oh, look at the super spreader events. Whenever it's something that was Republican or Trump related. But it's any time it was a rioting or celebrations, the, the same type of thing, it's looked at like that's okay because they're just... And you really don't, I mean, I want to be honest. I mean, put a one if you think there's hypocrisy for sure in that, in that angle, right? Because it's really people's choices to do it. Everybody knows what they're doing. And they know that not wearing a mask isn't safe. Everybody knows it. And everybody, it's their choice. So literally, I think you'd have to realize that it's absolutely hypocritical. And no matter how you look at it. And, and hypocrisy is one of the things I hate the most in politics. And that's what I think that's actually what makes people angry the most. You know, when you see people say, you know, now that the new administration's in, I hope everybody can work together and give them a smooth transition. And then I look at them and go, are you effing kidding me? You didn't do, do that for Trump whatsoever. The second he got in there, you investigated him for five freaking years. All right, so there you go. All right, everybody, I'm going to play this music, and uh, so I'm not I'm not going to a lot let there be a peaceful thing because I don't want to be a hypocrite. All right, I want I want everything to be fair and equal. And there you go, guys. There's your nice little chat music. Oh, sorry, I didn't do a flyby tonight. Juju positive. I'll do one in, uh, tomorrow, okay? How's that sound? All right, Juju Positive. Are you still there, Juju Positive? Okay, good. I'll do one next time. Yeah, I don't trust the media whatsoever. Yeah. Media sucks. to you too, Lee D. <laughs> Do -do -do.
Jack and Jill went up a hill, each with a buck and a quarter. Jill came down with two fifty. Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and said, Hey, what's in the bowl, biatch? <laughs> oh, this one. Jack and Jill went up the hill to have some hanky panky. Silly Jill forgot her pill, and now there's a little Frankie. Now, that was an Andrew Dice Clay too one. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, her clothes all tattered and torn. It wasn't the spider that crept up inside her, but Little Boy Blue and his horn. Hey, it's Billy Boy Blue again! Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men said, screw him, he's only an egg. <laughs> Mary had a little lamb, it ran into a pylon. Ten thousand volts went into his ass and turned its wool into nylon. Georgie Porgy pudding and pie kissed the girls and made them cry. When the boys came out to play, he kissed them too. Well, because he was gay, it said. Georgie Porgy pudding and pie kissed the girls and made them cry. When the boys came out to play, he kissed them too, because he was gay. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to fetch her poor doggy a bone. When she bent over, Rover took over and gave her a bone of his own. And that's one of George. <laughs> That's one of Billy Boy Blue's jokes. Billy Boy Blue, hey, he needed the money.
I wonder if that would want to work. Welcome, gentlemen, to that good night. Old age is burning, red and clothes of day. Raid right against the dying of the light. That doesn't work, but hey, that's fun. The itty bitty spotty crawled up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain and that's a itty spider went out the spider again. Do 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 do. I think any nursery rhyme would work, don't you guys? Any nursery rhyme. Billy boy blue lost his shoe. Hey, what's the one with the cradle? What's that one called? Oh, Rockabye Baby, that's right. But watch, somebody will still type it in even though you answered it within three seconds. And Zozo will type it in because that's her humor. I did earlier, Jay, I did it. Something that hold a new tightly flows like a hawk moon daily and nightly would have a stop, yo. I don't know. Turn off the lights and I'll blow to the tree. Rock a mic like a vandal out of the stage. I must jump like a candle jam. Those speakers are boom, killing your brain like a poisonous mushroom. Deadly when I play a big melody in it. <laughs> I know it's hard to do because his voice outdoes it. Yeah, yeah, his voice makes it so it's hard to hear the beat. you want the cradle to come down and have a baby fall with it? I don't know, but... rock a my baby in the treetop When the wind blows, the cradle will rock When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall And then will come, baby, cradle it all! God, that's so weird! Who would the hell would write something like that? That's crazy! I sit back with this brand new invention, something Try to hold a new pipe, it blows like a hot wind Billy and Mike, we will never stop, yo I don't know, turn off the light And I'll go to the extreme I rock a mic like a vandal Light up the stage, I want to jump like a candle's bath Cause the speakers hit boom Killing your brain like a poisonous mushroom Boom, 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 boom Walking down the street and I have this stuff Turned out different <laughs> Well, that's too short, it's a different beat. I am having fun! Yay! I don't know about how much fun Gray's having, though! Hey, Gray, are you having any fun at all? I don't know, I'm just sort of monitoring all this. What in the hell are you guys even doing here? 
Well, we're doing some raps. The nursery rhymes. What about you? I'm just, like I said, I'm just monitoring you. Isn't that obvious? Yeah, yeah, we already said that, that for God's sakes. sakes. I know, but you asked again. Ah, for seconds so um, you guys can keep chatting for a while if you'd like yeah hey uh good night Mary Lou wow <laughs> you're so mean <laughs> what, did, you, did you lose your cry sound there well, a little bit okay let me try it again you're so mean <laughs> no that's not what you used to do try it again try it again yeah. you're so mean <laughs> That's a little bit better. Nice try, nice try. Alright everybody, be safe out there. Oh, my wife thinks it's funny actually. <laughs>